Hey everyone, welcome back to Code Porn, the show that has nothing to do with porn and everything to do with making our lives easier through aspects. Just like we did in our T4 episode, we're going to generate code that we don't want to write. But this time, instead of using a template, we're going to use an aspect. Once again, we'll be using the PostSharp AOP framework, which you can find at PostSharp.net. Being a compile time framework, PostSharp gives us incredible and almost magical power. One of those powers is the ability to introduce members into types and even implement interfaces. This is what we'll be focusing on, an aspect that automatically implements and satisfies the iNotify property change interface. Let's jump right into our demo, which is a WPF application. I'll go ahead and run this to show you what it does. It's a basic window that has a few text fields and a button. The text fields are bound to properties on our view model, and the button is bound to a command which is also on the view model. When I click this button, the data should update to something different, but it doesn't. Just to make sure our binding is working, let's set a breakpoint on the method invoked by the button command. When we click the button, our breakpoint is hit, and we've proven that the binding is in fact working. I'll go ahead and stop the application so we can examine our view model. It's pretty basic with only three properties and a single command. In the constructor, we're setting some default values, which we see when the application started. In the update method, we're changing the property values to something else. Right off the bat, you should notice that we are not implementing the iNotify property change interface. If we had, the data in the text boxes would have changed when we clicked the button. If we manually implemented the interface, our view model will look a bit more like this. We'd have some backing fields. We'd need to set up each property setter to invoke our helper method that fires off the property changed event and we'd have to hard code the property names as strings. Down below, we'd have our event and our helper method. I don't know, maybe you're sick enough to like this kind of thing, but most of us really don't want to spend time writing or maintaining code like this. Yes, you can use an MVVM framework, but that's not the point of this episode. So let's go back to our clean view model. I like this much better, but we have the problem of implementing the interface. Time to build an aspect. I've already gone ahead and written the aspect, so I'll just go over the code and explain it. Don't worry, I'm going to show you a much better, faster, and easier way to build this aspect towards the end of the show. To start off, we have a regular class that we've named Notify Prop Changed Attribute. It's inheriting from instance level aspect, which means the aspect will have the same lifetime as the instance of the type it's applied to. Then we have our aspect implementing the desired interface that we want to implement on the target type. We've decorated the aspect class with the introduce interface attribute, and we've passed in the type of I notify property changed. The override action is set to ignore, which means if the target already has the interface specified on the class definition, it won't try to add it again. Now the introduce interface attribute tells PostSharp that we want to introduce the type of I notify property changed interface on the target type. Inside of the aspect, we've declared a generic action that takes in a string. This is going to be the delegate to our helper method that invokes the event. We've decorated it with the import member attribute, which is used to tell PostSharp to look inside of the type and get a handle to the specific member, which in this case, we want the on property changed method if one exists. We tell PostSharp that it's not required, so don't error if one isn't there. This allows us to implement the method on the class manually if we need to. Next is the actual event that is required by the iNotify property change interface. We've marked it with the introduce member attribute, which instructs PostSharp to inject this member into the target type. Again, we've set our override option to ignore, which means if it's already there, don't try to inject it again. Next up is our helper method, which we also decorate with the introduce member attribute. This method checks to see if there are any subscribers to the event. If so, then invoke it, passing in the name of the property that was changed. The last piece is our actual advice. Using the onLocationSetValueAdvice attribute, we tell PostSharp that this advice is targeting property setters. So each property in the target type will have its setter modified to run this code in place of its own. First, we check the value being passed in to the current value of the property. If they're equal, then return because nothing was changed. Otherwise, proceed to setting the value using the original setter method body. Once that's done, we use our delegate to invoke our helper method, passing in the name of the property that is being changed. I know this was quite a bit to take in, especially if you're not familiar with PostSharp, but don't worry, I promise I'll show you a much easier way. All we need to do now is apply this aspect to our view model and run the application.
Now when we click that button, the data changes just as it should. From here on out, all we need to do is apply the aspect to any view model that we might have to automatically implement and satisfy the iNotify property change interface. Our views stay nice and tidy, and we don't have to maintain a bunch of boilerplate code. Okay, so I promised to show you a better, easier way to do this aspect. What I showed you was the old and manual way. With PostSharp 3, you get a nice little adornment on methods, properties and fields, classes and namespaces that let you apply different types of aspects without typing in a thing. Instead of learning how to write aspects, you just need to point and click and then move on. It doesn't get any easier than this. So I'll click the I notify property change aspect, follow through the dialog, which is simple for this aspect since there's nothing to configure, and then we're done. It'll get added to our view model as if we wrote it ourselves. It literally took less than 15 seconds to do this. If you're interested in learning more about AOP and .NET, I recommend grabbing a copy of AOP and .NET by Matthew Groves. This book introduces aspect-oriented programming to .NET developers and provides practical guidance on how to get the most benefit from AOP in your everyday development. All right, that's it for this episode. Be sure to subscribe to our channel, follow us on Twitter and Facebook, and visit CodePorn.com when you have nothing better to do. See you next time.